In-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductory offer. See the link in the description to sign up. Many of the world's top teams now employ a press. Pressing is when players put pressure on the player in possession, the player about to receive possession or the ball, but with the express intention of regaining the ball. It's not passive like a block, it's an active movement, usually by several players at once, to squeeze space, deny options, and having one back the ball, either reset or immediately transition to an attack. And of course we know what pressing looks like, especially when enacted by its best exponents, the teams of Bielsa, Klopp, Guardiola, Nagelsmann. But how do teams know when to press? Any good pressing team does so as a team. While a single player might actively engage a press by chasing down a pass to a goalkeeper, without the rest of the team taking up sensible positions, this is useless. If a team is too passive, the lone presser will just end up expending energy and worse, being pulled out of position. So the rest of the team need to move into positions that help that press. This of course means that rehearsal is key, as is communication between teammates. Pressing is hard. It's both physically and mentally demanding. That's why teams can take time to adjust to an intense pressing style, as was seen at Liverpool when Klopp arrived, or at Southampton under Ralf Hasenhüttl. And because of this, pressing needs to be structured and directed. Teams have got better at playing through or over the press as it's become more popular, and so the Dutch press of 1970s total football, which was far more helter-skelter and largely involved swarming forwards towards the ball, wouldn't work now. Teams who press therefore rely on two things, pressing traps and pressing triggers. Pressing triggers are opposition actions or game circumstances that inform a team's decision to begin the press. They will be determined in part by how well the pressing team are set up. If they don't have enough players nearby to engage a press, even if there's a trigger, then the team may decide to regain a better defensive position instead, rather than further disrupt their shape. Some of the most common pressing triggers arrive from the attacking team's errors. These include hitting a pass that's too hard, or when the ball is bouncing and therefore difficult to control. Bad passes and bad receptions are also good triggers. This could be where a right-footed player is having to receive a pass on their left foot, or where a pass is into the space behind a player so they have to turn backwards to retrieve it. Or it could be where the player receiving the ball is looking down and therefore less aware of what's happening around them. Other pressing triggers are situational. Some intense Gagan pressing teams will press immediately upon losing possession in the final third. Another common situational trigger is a pass into the fullback. This is because the byline effectively acts as another defender, hemming the fullback in. And lastly, a pressing trigger could just be a certain player receiving the ball. Perhaps the opposition team have a back three with two strong passes and one weaker one. Cutting off the other passing options for the two strong passes means the ball goes to the weaker player, and that is the trigger. That last example could also be described as a pressing trap though, because it relies on actions by the defending team that will then lead to a more effective pressing situation. A pressing trap then is a plan by the defending team to create conditions in the game that will facilitate a press. This could mean encouraging or forcing the ball into certain zones of the pitch or towards certain players. Examples of this might be setting up a passive block that encourages a pass into the central midfield zone before engaging a press by surrounding a player, cutting off their options and winning back the ball. Or it could be setting up quite narrowly with the front line, blocking such central passes to encourage a pass wide before sending two players out towards the receiver who also block off options while one of the forwards goes to press the return pass option. Or it could be a press around the goalkeeper, forcing a pass towards one centre-back who is then pressured into passing quickly to another who is then pressed hard to achieve the turnover. Pressing triggers may involve a couple of phases like this, with a combination of marking passing lanes and applying light pressure to one player before rapidly moving into a wholesale press. The best teams will also know what to do once they've won the ball back, and how to transition immediately into attack. Pressing triggers are more consistent across teams. Pressing traps will vary from team to team and by opposition but both are key to understanding how and why teams press, and therefore key to understanding a prominent part of modern football. The Athletic is in-depth sports coverage that helps fans see the game from every angle. And Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per month. See the link in the description for details of this introductionary offer.
For football fans, that's access to the writing of journalists dedicated to your team, plus David Ornstein, Phil Hay, Daniel Taylor and many more. Not to mention over 400 full-time writers offering inside access and independent analysis of every team that you follow across every league that you care about. Get local expertise and unmatched league-wide perspective. The Athletics writers are in the bubble, on the field and behind the scenes as it all happens. Catch up, go deep and join the conversation on the most important happenings in sports.